Are you serious? Are you serious? Sarah uh, Bajak, I believe is how you pronounce her name, Sarah Bajak, uh, the girlfriend of one of the passengers, uh, Philip Wood, is, uh, is saying that they just had another news conference, another briefing from the, uh, the government there in Malaysia. She's in Malaysia, and her and her boyfriend were getting ready to move to uh, China when her boyfriend left on this plane, uh, and of course, that plane has disappeared. Missing flight, Malaysian airliner, flight 370. Now, she was interviewed by Aaron Burnett just uh, uh, on CNN, and she discloses that this, uh, there's no question that something, uh, something's wrong. It doesn't make sense. And also that there was a plane, there was uh, two military jets uh, that were following this plane, almost escorting it, and there is some eyewitnesses to that. So I want to share that with you, and, and also, it just doesn't make sense. Somebody's hiding something. We all know about the 20 guys from Free Scales Limited from Austin, Texas that was on the plane. We all know that out of those 20 engineers with intellectual property to deal with nanotechnology and bio-nanotechnology, semi, semiconductors, RFID, microchip for defense, uh, uh, defense, uh, contracts with all four military branches of the United States government. We also know that there was four of the men on that plane that had patent, had, had a very significant patent that they were part uh, part patent inventors with. A guy with, but the only one who wasn't on the plane that was the inventor, of course, was Mr. Rothschild. And so, what's that about? Uh, is there any? Uh, is that a coincidence? Or is there something more sinister here as we look at the New World Order? I want you to hear a little bit of the interview with um, uh, Sarah B B Bajak by uh, CNN. Uh, let me uh, play some of that for you right now with Aaron Burnett of CNN. <laughs> Breaking news tonight in the hunt for missing Malaysia Airlines Flight 370. At this hour, the biggest search day yet beginning. 11 ships, 15 planes heading, heading to the southern Indian Ocean, trying to race against time to find the vanished jet. As I said, the biggest search day yet, but it has been four weeks since the plane disappeared. So far, nothing. And the families of those on board are demanding answers, growing increasingly frustrated and angry with the Malaysian government for a lack of information. Several family members met with officials in Kuala Lumpur today, hoping for any news on what might have happened. Sarah Bajak was at that meeting. Her partner, Philip Wood, a 50-year-old from Texas with two sons, was in the process of relocating with Bajak to Malaysia when he boarded Flight 370 um, uh, just days ago. How are you doing now? Uh, I've, I've stabilized a little bit. Um, I think the first couple of days were just excruciating. They just ripped me apart. And then, you know, we had several weeks of misleads and misinformation that constantly changed. But in this last week, I think I've come to a realization that, um, that for sure the flight is still uh, intact and uh, the passengers are still alive. Listen to this. For a very long time over Malaysian airspace. So, you know, how, how long exactly, I'm not sure. But if it was half an hour, right. 45 minutes, you've got a 777, <laughs> an unidentified object that flying. theoretically has no communication with the ground, flying over their airspace. Right. And they're saying that their military just didn't see it. That's insane. Right? Or they didn't think it was a threat. They thought it was friendly. I, I don't believe that. No. Um, the... The Malaysian military is quite sophisticated. They've got one of the best radar coverage systems in this part of the world. They're clearly hiding something. Amen. And uh, we're going to be talking to the opposition leader from Malaysia in just a few moments on this on this program as well, Sarah, because I know he has a lot to say about He's actually the one who bought that radar system for uh, Malaysia. But when you say they're covering something up, why, why do you think they would do that? Yeah, why? Uh, I think they're doing that to hide what's really happened to the plane. Now, whether that's purely a Malaysian um, activity or if other countries are involved, I don't know. I mean, I, I really don't know why or how they've pulled it off. But I refuse to believe that the Malaysian military ignored a 777 in their airspace. Uh, there was one of the family members, a young gentleman, um, who, who pushed forward an idea that he had had 
notice from people he knew um, that the jet had actually been accompanied by fighter planes for some period of time. There was some witness to that. Now, that's the first time I'd ever heard of that prior to this meeting. Um, But that actually makes a lot more sense than a flight being ignored by right, the military. Right. So I think we need to have better um, view into where that plane ultimately went. And we'll be talking more and sharing more of that interview with you today on my live Sunday Night Live broadcast. So please don't miss it. Sunday Night Live begins at 7 p.m. Eastern, 7 to 10 p.m., three hours. We're going to cover the Malaysian missing plane. I've got also, why did Mr. Rothschild, why why wasn't he on the plane? How come the other four guys that own the patent with him are dead or missing and he is okay? Is there anything there? What about the Yellowstone National Park? The elk are now running away. What about uh, Israel? What's going on with the peace agreement? Uh, volcanoes erupting around the world, including Ecuador. Uh, Fort Hood shooters said the devil's going to take me. Demon spirits. Were, we got to cover it all. So don't miss the broadcast tonight. It starts at 7 p.m. Eastern at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. Give your life to Jesus Christ because we're living in the last days.